this is my load test machine. I can vary the pressure and the speed. Right now it's at about 17 millimeters per second. Um, it's a pretty big unit. It takes 55 gallons of oil just to fill that chamber. Okay, and here is what we have set up. I have my load cell set up at this end, and I've got my hitchhiker set up. We're going to see if we can break it today. But then what I've done is I've set a representation of the hitch that I normally use. This is hitch cord that I've been using. Um, we have the modified Catalan. It's like a regular hitch that just has a bunch of coils, but down at this end you can see the C shape. That C shape um, is an easy way to remember that it's a Catalan. It just has that bite that lays flat against the rope. It came from a Catalan that I saw Jesse tie, and then it was modified by a friend on Tree Buzz named Brocky. And this is what we have. It's like I pointed out in several other videos. It's very functional. It uh, engages very well. And um, it's, it's easy to tie and it's easy to get the tension just right. Anyway, I've done that on other videos. But I just wanted to point out, this is about the best representation I can get for having that hitch cord on the hitchhiker. I've got two Rock Exotica load cells, and we're going to measure the amount of controllable friction that we get off the hitch compared to the amount of friction. This is the proportional friction. I'm gonna set this at around 200 pounds. We're gonna to try to pull and monitor at about 200 pounds, and this will take a proportional amount of that friction automatically and then we'll control the remaining friction up here. And of course, this is like power brakes. The lighter you touch up here, the more control you have. And so in a multi-sender, we want to get as much friction down here that's controlled by the mechanical means, by those pins, and then we'll put the friction pin in there too and see how that works. And then we will um, see how much ends up being on the hitch that's actually controllable. You know, if a climber only weighed 50 pounds, they wouldn't need all of this down here. A 50 pound climber can go up and down a, a, a rope with just a hitch, um, as long as they're not doing it real quick. But most hitches, or I'd say all hitches, as soon as you start putting an awful lot of weight on there, even though we have this distributed throughout the hitch, it's going to put too much heat on that rope, on rope friction. But this is how a friction hitch works. This is how a hybrid device works. And so we're going to give it a pull test and see what kind of readings we get here as opposed to the readings we get on our uh, graph. Okay, we're going to start the hydraulics and we'll try to bring this up to about 200 pounds and then we'll control the hitch to see what kind of load we get on both of these. And the combined leg will tell me how much the hitch is actually doing. Ready? Right now, these look like they're coming up pretty balanced. I'm getting some tension on the rope as we pull. And I'm seeing 45 pounds or so, and I'm only still only seeing not much up there. That's coming up to 100, and the hitch is starting to engage. There's 200 or so, and I'm seeing uh, 14 and 12 right here on this side. And it's kind of hard to keep these where we can see them. Maybe, maybe that works better. All right, so there's, it's holding at 190 pounds or so. Uh, there's 250 pounds, and I'm seeing, I'm, sure can see that. I'm seeing 22 and 18. Anyway, so there's about 40 pounds we're seeing of my 240. 240 here, 
and uh, about 40 pounds there on a hitch. And so that's 200 and I'm going to try to let that hitch really dig in. There's 270 pounds and I'm still only seeing 22 and 18. Um, so I'll relieve, release the hitch a bit. And now these go down to 6 and 90. I'll bring it back up. There's... Get that hitch on 160 pounds or so, and I'm seeing about, what's that, 12 and 12, 24. So, again, there's 16, there's... There's, um... 16 and 12 out of 161. Uh, I'll do a little more, try to bring it back up again. There's 223 and 18 and 16. 250, 22 and 16. 240 and 22 and 16. Now I'm gonna just let it pull. So this would be holding my weight. And I'm gonna pull and just let the rope slip. Of the bar now. And we're going to just let that start to slide as if. And so now we're to we're sliding it around, starting to creep at around 200 and over 200, 220 pounds or so. And I'm seeing 14 and 12. So I'm seeing about 24 uh, pounds. Here, while I'm seeing about 200 pounds there. There's 400 pounds. 
there's uh, 400 pounds, and again, we're at about 22 and 26. Again, 400 pounds, and we're seeing about 20 and 20. Now, if I take the friction plug out, and I haven't backed anything off, we've just unloaded the friction plug. And now it's getting really hard to hold 400 pounds. In fact, the hitch is starting to slip, so I can't bring it up to 400 pounds. I'm only coming up to 250 pounds, and I got 14 and 18. There's 200. And again, so in order to hold a two-person load, I would have to add friction. And then I add friction, again, that proportion of friction ends up being a lot less, and it keeps that friction hitch within a manageable range when it comes to both temperature and pressure. It keeps the hitch from burning out or locking up because this takes a proportion, and during that proportional load, if we add a second load, we can add friction with the plug and keep it there and still have our hands free to do whatever we have to do with the victim. So here's the actual computer readout. And this was the first section where I was keeping it between two and 300 pounds. And this is the second section where we were uh, simulating a two person load. We came up to 500 pounds at one point. And my enforcer, I don't have the readout for that, but we have in the video, the various uh, readings but that gives you an idea of what was going on with the actual mass of the climber, how much, how much weight the climber was exerting on that hitch and how much proportion the mechanical part took as opposed to the uh, remaining that the controllable part of the friction hitch took. And then we added the friction plug to uh, keep the controllable friction well within manageable limits when it comes to both temperature and uh, load on a friction hitch. And again, I've turned off the hydraulics and everything, but you can see this is holding right now at about 212 pounds. And the hitch cord is holding 14 there and 14 on the other side. So it's holding about 28 pounds. The controllable part is about 28 pounds as opposed to the weight of the climber being in the 200 pound range. All right, so we're gonna just release the hitch and you can see it's going, the hitch is going down to four and 10. There's 150 pounds. It's dropping down to four and eight, 14, 15 pounds out of 130 pounds. There's eight pounds total. There's eight and two, so 10 out of 123. We're gonna break this uh, 10 millimeter beeline. It's new line. it hasn't been used. It's rated at 11,500 pounds, and we're using it in a double leg configuration on the hitchhiker to give it an ultimate brake test. deformation on there. I mean, I can't, I can't break that. I just can't break it. It'll break hitch cords all day long before it even, even bends this. Nothing. That's incredible. Good job, Richard. 
So this was the full break on the B line. It broke at 5,119.137 pounds. And again, the hitchhiker, the metal components didn't even flinch. That's awesome on a hit. That's awesome on a hit. 